evening and probably good night from Yami B T V. Wishing you all well, sending loads of love to you as usual. Um, sorry about the noise of the fan, very, very stuffy in here. I was due to do a podcast today in here and for unforeseen circumstances, uh, he hasn't been able to turn up, but tomorrow, uh, hopefully, he will do. But anyway, are you left to make do with just me tonight, I'm afraid? Um, I was thinking back as well, we talk about freely on Yami B TV about a lot of things uh, about prison, but we also talk about members of staff having access to your file. Uh, so most of the time, it's not just uh, governors and other types of officers like senior officers that can have access to those files. It's almost any member of staff. If you like, I'm even aware that teachers from the education can press on to certain things into the computers uh, and get information not related to what they're really looking for, but can, you know, find out um, various things uh, about you that are not um, related to what they're looking for, if you get what I mean, sorry. But one thing, one thing that disturbed me tonight was that, you know, because we're going to get round to this, this because you know the early morning stuff inside prison is a real, real, not a nice, nice, nice place to be in for prisoners, if you get what I mean. Uh, these days you can wake up and you've got a sink and you've got sanitation in the cells and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to go into a recess for slop out. Uh, not even in the London jails anymore do you have to do that. So the night before, right, uh, an argument took place, like... As usual, I was running about, I was late to bang up, and there was this officer, an old style one, you know, uh, glasses, bald head a little bit, but someone that you look at straight away, we've had this before, where you think, oh, I don't like him, I don't. Uh, but, you know, they get to know you over a long period of time and get to know your ways and my ways of running about and being late to bang up and trying to score or get something before I get banged up. And then you get rudely interrupted, even though it's their job to interrupt you, uh, rushing you to get banged up, right? So you know you're saying, um, the yammy of old will be saying, no, uh, F off, uh, I'll be back, I'll be down the stairs in a minute because uh, other people, it's not, the whole wing hasn't banged up yet. So I end up getting my own way as usual in there until it's my turn to not get my own way uh, in which case I would get punished for uh, I started to smirk at him because like I got what I wanted so when I got into the cell and as he was slamming the door as, he, as the door was about to be slammed he looked at me and he said to me he said yeah Yami he goes at least my own mum never phoned the police on me and got me locked up and slammed the door. So I'm lying there and I'm thinking, what's he on about? Like, why is he bringing my mum? Rest in peace, mum. Um, why is he bringing my mum's name into this, right? So overnight, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and I'm remembering, right? So remember the time when the siege was in Surrey, in Red Hill, when the armed police came for me and there was a negotiator. Um, phoning, asking me in the whole house and uh, to come out with their hands up. Uh, they, they negotiate. I was trying to make a deal with me uh, to come out first. I was saying no, but da 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 because they believed I was armed and whatnot. So I ended up in custody and I find out in the paperwork that my lovely mother, out of concern uh, because the police had already been to my mother and father's house without me knowing, without, I never had this knowledge or nothing. And apparently my lovely mother tells the police, can you please, uh, cause they come armed, she's frightened of course. And she tells him that please, can you not shoot, shoot my son, uh, uh, give him a chance and let him live. Um, he's not bad, you know, you know look, look, our mothers love their sons and that kind of stuff. Uh, and so she's aware that they think that I'm armed and I'm dangerous, so to speak. So it's in the reports that she mentions that, yes, she believed that I did have a gun, but she didn't say she'd seen it or nothing like that. But she basically was out of concern. Uh, so she kind of let them know where I might be staying or the area 
where I might be staying. But, you know, I, it's your mum. She's not doing it out of malice or things. She's doing it because she doesn't understand the law like we do. She wants, she wants you to just be safe and put away in prison out of harm's way. So basically, the police have found the area where it is, Red Hill, Surrey, and through other informations that they were having from that end, I get arrested and I end up in custody. So what he's referring to, this, this prison officer, is that, that moment. So what he's, what he's thinking with his stupid bald-headed glasses self is that my mum phoned the police and said, oh, oh, my son's got a gun, go and look for him down there. No, that's not what it was, right? So I'm just explaining to you what, 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 what kind of things happen in prison again and uh, how they can have access to reading stuff and the ways in which they can wind you up, say. So I'm thinking over the night, and I'm thinking, well, nah, this is, that's a proper liberty, you know? Uh, one, you're bringing my mum's name into it. Two, you've got the facts completely wrong anyway. And even if she did, she'd done it out of concern. But, you know, it really, 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 really hurt me. You know, and I think it was during this time as well, my, my father had about six months to live because uh, he had the cancer and, uh, you remember the story I gave you about that, where they didn't, they didn't even let me go to the funeral. They let Reggie and Ronnie go to the funeral, but they wouldn't let me go to the funeral for reasons I found out in later life uh, that probably wasn't uh, the prison's fault, but some, some other things or whatever. So first thing in the morning, as I woke up, my mind's working overtime, right? So I'm sick. I'm, I'm saying when I see this geezer, Right, wrongly, wrong action to take, but some of you know, in that old way of thinking, not promoting that you know, anybody that says anything of such horrible stuff, you know, you're to, to not react in that way. But as soon as I set eyes on him, I absolutely annihilated him. Right, I'm not going to go into it, I got charged and everything. Uh, I was even laughing when they beat me up and all that when I was down the seg and everything. Uh, but those are the kind of things that they can say to wind you up because they get access, they can read your letters and your girlfriend's giving you a dear John or something or, you know, you get a bad, bit of bad news or, you know, they get to peep in to your life that's going on outside. That's not really part of the sentence that the judge has given you. He's given you a sentence to serve, but a prison officer is not allowed really to use those things against you if you get what I mean, or use it in a way uh, to get make you feel hurt and pain, you know? So I look at him as a horrible man. Do I regret uh, uh, smashing him to pieces? Not really, you know? Rest in peace, mum, you know? But for that reason, I'm saying I was hurt. But over the years, first thing in the morning has often been uh, a terrible time to wake up in the morning because uh, in prison. Um, not so much now, hold on one second. Not so much now because, as I said, the sanitation is in the cell, but the old days of slop out, we've gone into it before. Uh, right? We've gone into it before, but some of the things I've seen in recesses are really, 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 on, on sometimes comical and sometimes really, really, really serious. Because on the one hand, you know, you get arguments out of windows, we know that, and then, you know, things are shouted out, like, yeah, in the morning, all right, see you in the recess in the morning. I mean, in the old days of the London jails, you know, like, you'd have the ones, twos, threes, fours, or uh, I think fours, threes, yeah, fours and threes, and you'd have a landing officer in the middle of the centre of the landing, uh, probably with a book, um, in an exam where he takes applications like he's leaning up there and there's obviously someone wants a razor even them days you do, you couldn't keep really razors in your cells at certain times uh, times gone by and you know you tick off what you want you, there's certain things you can have it's not like, like, like much being down the block these days really but those days those were normal for normal things on normal location so you know like fights itself when it takes place in the morning you, you've either got to be up early or you've got to be, you know, you, you're waking up with all your eyes like that and the argument has taken place out the window. You're emotionally charged and you don't get a good night's sleep. I don't care who you are, you're still going to, still a worrying or concern because when you call it on like a fight, so to speak, like you, um, 
you know that you, you're, you're thinking at that time, I wish he was in front of me now and blah, blah, blah. But it's very difficult to get to sleep knowing that there's going to be a war. Well, me sometimes, it's very hard unless you, you've got something to go and make it go to sleep. But when you wake up and the dawn sets in and you know when the door opens, you've got to go downstairs or you've got to go across to the recess and you're wondering what the other man's going to be bringing with him. Uh, whether he's got to come with a weapon, whether it's going to be a straightener with his hands. You're not sure what's coming. So I remember times, well, I'll speak on behalf of myself, but I know another, a lot of men can testify to the fact that, you know, the night before the next morning, you don't feel the same way as before the, you know, like at the time you was really angry, but now you're thinking, oh God, I don't really want to, I don't feel as angry as last night over something so trivial, whether it was a roll up or those are the kind of things. Remember, fights can happen over absolutely anything in there. So you walk into the recess. I think I had one, didn't I, where, remember I think in other videos where it got called on, say for instance, and, and the man's filling up, <laughs> the man's filling up his bowl like putting a tap on, but you know already that he's meant to be expecting me. So to me, I take that as a sign of weakness because you've you're you're getting your water, but you wouldn't be getting in your water if you're expecting to have a row. You'll be waiting over there, waiting for me to come in, and it will start going off physically, wouldn't it? So I could well, I don't know anyway. That morning I didn't care. I just steamed in straight away and started throwing punches and all that. The fight didn't last long. This is local gels. The bell gets pressed and you get wrapped up and you get done in. Uh, but some of the things I've seen over the over the years with, you know, urine being thrown in a man's face and then or a man slipping in his own urine or, or you know, the toilet, the excrement in the old days with the pots and those things being thrown and inmates are laughing, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm thinking again about other things, you know, where, where the recess has always played a part in fights over the years, you know. Uh, so much better now that there isn't one, but there are recesses, but it can still happen in the shower rooms. But the old ones where you're down with association, like from day dot in the early days, say for Ellsbury when you're on the pool table, I mean, one of my besties, uh, there was a geezer as well, who was meant to have started the Brixton riot uh, in the back of a, of a geezer called Biscuit. It meant to have, I don't know whether he did, proper stuff, Biscuit, I liked him, many of you might have met him. Uh, we was all around the pool table, dirty Harry, uh, and they're playing a game of pool. My game next, your game next, the same old nonsense. And the person that I liked, uh, the other geezer that he's arguing with, can have it. You're right. They're both tall for the race, they've both got a bit of size on. And the favourite one of, all right then, so the screws ain't looking, nobody knows you're on the thing, so you're a badder man because you're not doing it in front of the screws. You're saying, all right, go to the recess. You walk to the recess first, so no one don't look, so it looks all legit and everything. Everybody's like standing by and watching. And I'm hoping, oh no, I hope my mate, he don't lose, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and he walks off first, he's on his way, and then the other one's walking, you know, the swag up when you're in Ellsbury and you, you know, you're building up reputations for yourself. But I remember standing by the pool table, I wanted to go around and have a look, but I was really small then. And everyone's saying, no, 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 don't leave it. We don't want to bring it on top. We don't want them to get in trouble, blah, 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 blah. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. It seemed to go on for ages. It felt like I was living every single, whatever was happening in there. So one comes back. So he comes back and he's got a black eye and he's got a fat lip and he's got tissue and he's wiping it and he's standing up there all cool. Like. So I'm thinking to myself, oh no, my mate's lost, you know, because he's the first out of the recess. You know how you think when you're young, uh, but not necessarily so. My mate came walking back and he had a little bit of a swagger. He came back round by the other side, no bruises on him. So then I'm taking it then that he won, right? So I don't know, but afterwards, uh, a geezer, another geezer was, that was there as well, rest in peace as well. Amazing how many times I've got to come up here and say a lot of criminals from early ages died quite early in life, never even got to live this life. And I remember saying to him, what, 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 what happened? And he said to me, what do you mean? You know that, you know that I won. You know that well, no one was there to say so, uh, but going by the faces, 
Uh, I'd have to think then that he got the bruises, not unless he knocked him spark out at some stage and got back up. I don't know, but he didn't have no marks on him. But the moral of the story was that there's some horrible bastard officers in there that peep into your stuff and can say some really hurtful things. And is it right that they should have access to such things? Um, probably be up tomorrow with a big podcast, but love you all, love you all dearly. Sending loads of love.